Hello, class and friends and Miss Borchers. My name is Emerson, and this is my presentation on Internet Governance. So, basically, in order to understand Internet Governance, you need to start from uh, the basic principles of the Internet in the first place. Now, uh, in the late 60s, the Internet was developed by the United States government uh, under the name of a program called ARPANET. ARPANET was a uh, series of connections between a whole bunch of separate computer locations, mainframes, uh, in a whole bunch of different locations, uh, and it basically connected uh, government communication between these places. It was originally completely an experiment, but uh, they realized that it was really working, and uh, within four or five years, they had uh, satellites connecting uh, bases, and they were able to send messages back and forth using their primitive, gigantic computer systems. So anyways, uh, flash forward a few years, uh, and you have uh, ARPANET getting bigger and bigger, but uh, at the same time, you have other, uh, in other places, you have uh, primitive internet forms arising in other countries and at the same time you have government uh, the government uh, wanting to control what they send back and forth you know because the government does try to maintain some same some bit of privacy from the people so uh, they didn't want anybody reading uh, all their communications considering that uh, people were now able to access the internet at primitive levels so from ARPANET came ARPA internet which shortened now to the form that we use today, which is called the Internet. Now, the thing about the Internet is that since it's so widespread around the entire world, uh, there are very few ways to control it, not to say that people haven't tried to control it. What that means is that uh, if you put something on the Internet, er, what Internet governance basically means is who controls uh, who controls what people can see, what people can access, and what people can buy over the internet. <clears throat> For example, uh, right now, if somebody wanted to make a website that sold guns wholesale to anyone, they wouldn't be allowed to do that because of uh, the fact that right now. Uh, the uh, Federal Chamber of Commerce are the people that own the Internet, and the Chamber of Commerce, just the same as they don't let people in stores just basically sell a gun to anybody, through the Internet, uh, through Internet governance, they won't let anybody just buy a gun offline. Although it is somewhat doable, just the same way. You can really look for anything on the Internet. Uh, which brings up another issue. Uh, this is called net neutrality. Net neutrality is a policy of being completely neutral on what people can view, what people can access on the internet. Major proponents of net neutrality include Google, Yahoo, uh, basically the people that run the internet now uh, really support the fact and the general idea of the internet, which is free enterprise among people, which is totally free uh, totally free for anybody that they want to see or view on the internet. People that oppose this, on the other hand, include people like Comcast, uh, the people that control means of access to the internet, uh, because they can, because in order to access the internet, odds are you're going to have to be paying through some sort of telecommunication service, including uh, Bell South or uh, any of those, you know. So that's basically... Uh, those are the type of people that would be in charge of limiting of limiting your access to the internet. Right now, the federal government's stance on uh, net neutrality is pro-net neutrality, saying that you can go on the internet, you can do whatever you want, but at the same time, uh, you can't forget about the Chamber of Commerce, which states that or, which the Chamber of Commerce, which controls. Uh, basically controls what you can and cannot buy on the internet. For example, uh, uh, for example, a problem came up about uh, what 
uh, where the taxes should go of uh, things that were purchased over the internet. You know, for ex for in the first place, dot com stands for dot commerce. The internet was designed uh, as really a means of governmental exchange, and then secondarily, it came up as a great way to be able to buy and sell things from anywhere across the world. So, uh, considering that you can buy or sell anything, the main problem now is tax. Like, what, or at least within uh, the states, within the nation, uh, the problem is tax. Who should, what state, basically, should collect the tax money? They eventually uh, created a clause that states that uh, the, the state that the item is purchased in gets to benefit from, uh, or gains the taxes of the item. So that was a uh, basic way to control internet governance, really, that the government hadn't explored before just because of the means that there wasn't the technology to control it. Now, on the other hand, uh, the government has a hand in PayPal, has a hand in eBay and all those things, that's my dad in the background, um, has a hand in all these things, and they can basically know. <laughs> I'm talking about internet neutrality. What do you have to say about internet neutrality? <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, basically, now uh, there. Although people are saying that. Uh, you shouldn't be able to, or, although telecommunications companies are trying to monitor uh, network neutrality and trying to limit it, uh, although they can do some stuff, like what they have done, for example, Comcast uh, takes a direct stand in controlling P2P uh, -P networking, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, which basically means uh, something that somebody on the internet can send to another person on the internet. The main problem in this is illegal file exchange, you know, selling movies, selling uh, music, selling all that, uh, or not selling it, getting it for free and being able to access anything, which really, if you look at uh, music sales, has hurt their industries. So Comcast, on the other hand, doesn't like net neutrality, and they take a hand in uh, basically controlling what you can and cannot access. So I'm going to sum up this presentation right now by first reading you all a uh, what the standing federal uh, federal hold on Natasha wake up uh, or the FCC broadband policy statement which is the internet policy statement that stands for the internet today uh, and what I was saying, FCC stands for Federal Communications Commission, which also does have a hand in the Internet because the Internet is a form of communication. Now, uh, the FCC's standpoint on this issue goes as follows. Uh, the principles are to encourage broadband deployment and preserve and promote the open and interconnected nature of the public Internet, consumers are entitled to... Access lawful internet content of your choice, as long as it's lawful and not child porno, Billy. Uh, run this application, or to run applications off the internet and use services of their choice, you know, like Google, etc., be able to download programs and stuff off that that aren't viruses because viruses are illegal by the federal government mandate, or by federal government orders. Uh, connect their choice of legal devices that do not harm the network, including... Uh, Vime wire, all of those things, because they're not officially harming the commu the con connection, and uh, to control competition among, uh, you're entitled to competition among network providers, application and service providers, and content providers. So, if uh, telecommunications companies were able to uh, control net neutrality and say that like you can't access this website, or for example, to hold this website on the internet, you have to pay so and so amount of money. The problem is that that, in a sense, is a monopoly over the internet, which strikes uh, or which clashes with uh, constitution principles that say monopolies are not allowed, which is the conflict between the federal government and uh, having net neutrality. So basically, uh, now the only thing I want to leave you guys to discuss is the possibility of 
Say somebody was able to control the internet. Say there was one person or a whole committee of people or just like a group of people that could control what you can and cannot see all over the internet. I want you all to discuss right now uh, what positive and negative connotations it would uh, have if there was a sort of big brother on the internet. Discuss. And this has been a presentation of me.